This week on Prof and Dev Play Games, we are talking PAX West, we are talking Deadlock, and we are talking the first installment of a wonderful video game uh, uh, game. <laughs> video game game, for lack of a better term, that Anthony has no idea what's coming. We'll get there after the break. All right, my friends, welcome to episode 445 of Prof and Dev Play Games. My name is Larry, the professor at Prof Plays Games uh, on Blue Sky. Over there is Anthony, the dev at Summer Speak on Blue Sky. You were at PAX West this week. We did go to PAX West. Yeah, one day. Um, I wasn't really expecting to go, um, but I had the opportunity, so I took it. Um, and I you went down the for just. You take it. <laughs> yeah, I took it. Worked out with schedule for my family and kids and stuff, or I could just go Sunday. Um, got to use the light rail uh, for Seattle, which is great. Always parked at a park and ride the light rail. Got to the convention center in ten minutes. Um, Seattle slowly getting good public transportation just takes decades, but oh, I'll yeah. take I'll take the I'll take the win for this right now. Um, it mm-hmm. worked really well whenever you came up pre pandemic for. Um, Com- uh, Emerald City Comic Con. Uh, yeah, it was great. We, we stayed at a hotel and just took light rail. Yeah. Yeah, it was simple. It always was running. So, um, so yeah, I was able to just park and go into downtown and uh, spend the entire day just wandering packs and seeing what uh, a post pandemic PAX is like. Because I didn't, I haven't gone since uh, 2019. Oh, wow. This is your first time back. And I think, yeah, and I'm trying to remember, they definitely had it last year. I just don't know if they had it in 2022 or not. Um, I can't remember. But yeah, I feel this like the they first did time. because we were like, what the hell already? That doesn't, yeah, I think they did. Yeah, and I think, well, they definitely had, uh, yeah, they probably did have it. Um, yeah. I think they did. And I think I remember looking at them and being like, there's nothing going on <laughs> and no one here. Yeah. Why? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they did. Um, but yeah, it was pretty, pretty small. It was a m- much smaller portion of the convention center. Um, this year, this time the uh, no. no, that okay, was that in twenty twenty two, and they've kind of been yeah. rolling back up. Um, this year, why it was kind of neat was uh, the Seattle Convention Center opened a new building. Mm. So there's the building that you, when you've come up and seen that's that's still there. That's the main convention center. It has the arch over the the street. Yeah. Um, right downtown Uh, a block away. They now have another like six story convention hall. Uh, They're not connected, but uh, there's not because of where our convention center is in the city. It's really, it'd be almost impossible to connect them because of how the interstate (laughs) and it goes underneath them um, in the city. It's a weird, weird zoning and city planning going on there. But so it's a block away. You have to walk out and walk into the other one. Um, It's a nice building though. I was pretty surprised, but they put all the tabletop in that building um, on the basement and the first and second floors. Um, they put the autographing and band land there. And then that's where all the panel rooms are. We're in the new place. And then the arch is what they call the old one. It's the, it's basically just the expo hall at that point. Um, the video game expo hall. And uh, it was crowded like a full convention. Again. Oh, well, it's like back, um, back kind of thing. Oh yeah, I was like, all right, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna wait an hour. Not even hour would be optimistic. Probably multi hour lines to play any of these games. Um, yeah, I saw that. Uh, Echo, and look. Echoes of Wisdom was on the floor to play. It was. You could, you could play it. Um, as I always say with that, I'm like, why would I wait hours to play a thing that I'm going to play anyway? Yeah, um, you're gonna play soon. That's right. Yeah, I'm gonna play soon, and I'm like, I don't. I am not one to wait that long for something that I know that I, if I'm excited for it, I'm going to buy it. Yeah. Um, it's the same with Monster Hunter Wilds was, was there and playable. Oh, cool. Um, wow, wow, wow. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. I uh, sat and watched uh, from uh, sat outside of the booth, watched uh, groups play it. Um, they were doing four person parties all running through the open world on their on their mounts, hunting monsters. Uh, looks really cool, um, but I'm not going to wait hours to play that um, yeah 
I think well, the key were... part from watching that, though, I think that's coming early next year. That's exactly what I was going to ask you. I'm surprised it's on the floor. If it is, that indicates Q1. I would yeah, think. They've shown off all the weapons at this point. Yeah. Um, they've done little videos and uh, on like all the weapons. Uh, they're starting to show off some of the monsters. It's playable in this state, in the multiplayer state of con. I, I think it's probably February or March, my yeah. expectation. Um, Q1 which kind of matches uh, it's, Monster it's Hunter stacked. World. Also, yeah, it came out like January, a, I thought. Yeah, it had an early early release of whatever year that was, 2016, 2015? Uh, I thought 2018, I thought we or said. Or 20, 2018? I thought I we said know. it last, last week. Um, but dude, Q1 2025 is going to be massive. Yes. Wow. Um, <clears throat> so, that was a, it was fun to just stand and, and watch that. There was the Nintendo booth. A uh, big Final Fantasy fourteen booth, but I mean, I play that. It wasn't anything yeah. new there. It was like, hey, it's we're celebrating Dawn Trail. That's yeah. cool. Um, uh, they had a bunch of Final Fantasy fourteen merch. I didn't purchase anything, but I, I took a little survey because I play the game, and I got a little sticker that uh, matches where I live. Um, uh, Keep Toral weird is the sticker with an alpaca on it. Um, and Interesting. That's cool. Um, which I was like, okay, that's a fun sticker, um, because where I live, Vashwad Island is, uh, there's everyone, pharmacy here, places around sell stickers there, keep Vashon weird. So I was like, okay, this is my nerdy little reference to my island, I guess, in my head. Um, yeah. so that was there. Path of Exile 2 was there. I watched a little bit of that. Um, very curious, um, how that is I think it's going to be received well, but I do feel like there's going to be some like adjustment to Path of Exile 2. Um, From it's one. Much, yeah, it's a much mm. slower game, much deadlier game mm. overall. Um, mm. It's just since they split it, originally their plan was that Path of Exile 2 was just going to be another part of Path of Exile. Um, and you could choose which campaign you were going to play, um, but it all met up at the same end game. And then they year and a half, two years ago, was like, no, Path of Exile 2 is its own thing now, and it's clearly trying to, like, set its own rhythm and pacing for action RPG that is separate than Path of Exile. Um, so we'll see. I, I don't know how that's gonna... It's a challenging thing, because I'm like, are you splitting your player base at this point? Because um, I'm sure there will be people that are just like, no, I don't want to play Path of Exile yeah, 2. I right. want to play Path of Exile. I like that game um, yes interesting idea to keep the old one going while you're trying to get the new one spun up um yeah uh online games like that are, are really hard i mean that's why you don't have like a wow two. um right. it's like no we want to keep everyone in world of warcraft um not split them like everquest did with everquest 2 um that was had a it had problems back in the day because of yeah. that um so that was interesting to watch, and I'm, I'm just curious. It's an action RPG. I'll play it. It's free to play when it comes out, um, I think, in... November, uh, I thought, isn't it? Yeah, early. it's early access at that point. It, oh, got not, it. They're not calling it 1.0, and it's not going to be 1.0 probably for a year or more. So, yeah. But it's a free-to-play game, so early access is you can well start playing it. And um, original Path of Exile kind of launched that way back in... I don't even know, it was 2013 when Path of Exile originally launched. Um, it didn't have all the acts available. Um, they kind of added a, those over time. It is interesting to see it launch, at least early access, so close after um, Vessel of Hatred, Diablo 4. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it, I feel like that they're they're taking, uh, not a risk, but they're like, they're confident. I'll say yeah. that. Um, yeah. And, and we'll get to what I'm playing. I can talk all about Diablo 4. I've been playing a lot of it. Me um, too. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> um, <laughs> Finally. Yeah. Uh. Um, so I saw and those kind of were like the main initial ones I saw. Um, uh, Mihoyo, uh, Mihoyo had a big Zenless Zone Zero presence there. Maybe um, the same one as they had at Comic-Con. Was it like a truck kind of thing? And Yeah. It yeah. was just like a big booth. And uh, a lot of these booths have come from like Gamescom and places like that. Sure, exactly. Yeah. Like this, they're just reusing them throughout. Yep. Um, 
So they had a bunch of stuff you could do if you want to take the time to like wait in different lines there to get rewards, um, to get stamps basically. And you could trade the stamps in, um, for rewards. I didn't, I only had a day. I wasn't spending my time doing that. Um, yep, yep. but they had, um, man, their, their booth was packed. I'll say that. Um, always. Um, so good for them. Um, uh, thinking my way through the whole thing. Um, picked up uh a new stardew valley guide from fan gamer um like a paper guide f- yeah physical wow. book guide okay. for stardew valley they do a really nice version with custom art like um written by um, concerned ape as well like it's hardback uh, we have the original one um that is for like 1.0 mm-hmm. but there's now a 1.6 and so they've this is a new guide that came out and it goes through all the content that was put into the game up through spring of this year. So, um, and you said concerned ape wrote the whole book or just piece of it or parts of it. He's credited as one of, one of the writers. There's an artist and to him and I think two more writers credited on it. So, um, so yeah, the uh, fan gamers have been the one that's always put that guide out and it's just a, it's a nice little book. Uh, and my original one, (laughs) Uh, has seen a lot of love from my kids and my wife. So uh, it's well it's well used. And now we have a new one. Um, yeah. When the late, latest update comes to Switch, it's still not on consoles yet. Um, and he's apologized for that on right. uh, public-facing yeah. Twitters and stuff, being like, it's coming, we're working on it. Uh, it's probably, knowing the Switch from my side and getting Astroneer on it, it's probably memory problems. They've added so much, it's like how much can they keep in memory at once? Um, mm-hmm. If you go t- over memory, the switch will just shut the app down. <laughs> um, uh, and it is a, it is a challenge. And so I have a feeling they're probably writing well, some tech that will a lot un- of that now. dynamically load and unload things. <laughs> um, yeah. We're seeing a lot of that right now with discussion about Xbox series X and S and how many games are just like, we can't handle mm-hmm. them the memories with the the s it's causing problems and i'm sure uh with the development of the switch too at least what i've read at least is people were just like get the ram is going to be severely expanded because of these kinds of problems so that's that's good yeah yeah so um that's just my guess but it's a pretty common problem when games expand on the switch and get more and more stuff um and you don't think about oh we're pushing up against memory limits of the switch um so uh, that was cool. The fan gamer booth is always there and always fun. Uh, Larian was there, not showing anything new. It's the, it was the Baldur's Gate three booth, um, but it's kind of like their last, their last on, panel on Baldur's, on Gate. Baldur's Gate three. Like they're done exactly. Yep, yeah, yep, it was yep. the last panel. Like they they've moved on. The pat this week uh, is patch seven is coming out, which is for PC, and that is official mod support, and you can just install the mods right from inside the game, one click installation of different mods um some more dark urge ending uh additions and changes um a lot of rumors that uh alfina uh, alfira the bard uh is going to be in your party at some point um if that's a full what full include or just a partial for some time i don't know oh my god that would be very cool and added it would i'd be very curious if they're gonna and do that because they just don't have a they don't have a bard um party member right now yeah so i'd be very curious if they um put one in but even if it's like a temporary thing um we'll see um but they were there it, it was pretty pretty small there I'm trying to think of other other interesting things i saw there wasn't a huge number of booths uh big company booths um Kind of went through the main ones there. Uh, Sony and Microsoft did not have booths at here. They weren't really here at all, other than Phil Spencer gave the keynote on Friday. Um, I just saw the one quote running around about how he talked about how he made some terrible game decisions or something. Sure. Yeah, I didn't watch the watch it, but um, but other than that, I don't think Microsoft had any presence whatsoever. Um, oh, Sony had a, an Astrobot thing out in like. A hallway like i saw oh, that what? right okay. as i was leaving it was not in the main hall like i walked i was walking down a different set of escalators and i was like oh 
there's an Astrobot display over here, and they have like three or four demo stations set up to play Astrobot. That's about it. Um, kind of weird, but yeah, because it's coming out Friday. You think there'd be a little more fair? Yeah. fair. Nope. Um, the game of the year, that, right like there. The Come on, Tony. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Expo Hall uh, was generally fine, though. Um, I think. It was packed. It was what I expected out of PAX um, in that regard for like looking around at all these things. Um, the To switch to a disappointment I was looking at, there's really no panels or very few now. Um, really? They consolidated all the panels into like one floor and there's a few the- a few rooms that they're doing panels in, but there's not that many. I looked on Sunday when I was there waiting to get in. I was like, okay, what's going on today? And there's nothing that interested me panel wise, and it was not that many panels. Um, that sucks because the panels are the be- my favorite part of Comic Con, at least. Yeah, uh, yeah, and, it, and in some ways, I'm just, I feel like there's probably a good chance that people just don't really want to send their people. Um, yeah, anymore. I can see that. Yeah, sure. Um, but I, I really don't know. It was kind of it was a, it was a little sad. I'll say. In that regard, um, like there's panels on like well, the schedule, they they make it padded out, make it look bigger, but a lot of it is like tabletop tournament stuff. Um, so like I can look at the schedule now, and like so much of it is like miniature demos, learn to play Dungeons and Dragons, um, yeah, Star Wars sure. miniatures game. Oh, at ten there was one panel tabletop that was like on indie RP, classic modern and indie RPGs. Uh, that was one panel. Um, there was like one thing every hour, but it's very rare that there was multiple, um, panels running at the same time. So, um, kind of how it was. And it just, I, it just doesn't seem like it's a a main draw for being here anymore. Um, like you may see something once during the day if you if it hits you right but it's not like there there's multiple trying to compete for your time or anything like that so yeah uh i saw like larry did a panel um yeah i watched that on youtube it was pretty good yeah it was good um uh wizard of the coast did a magic the gathering panel for their next set coming out um what's the next set because bloomborough just Dusk, came out dusk morn huh and all right uh, October. Um, Damn, which they put is them out like quickly. all eighties, eighties horror type stuff. Oh, okay. Skip. <laughs> it's all horror, horror yeah. themed. Um, yeah, I mean that's the thing. There's just different themes all the time. Um, yeah. So, yeah, Bloomberg came out. I don't think this is a. I don't know how big this set is. Um, I'm just biding my time for Final Fantasy. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Um. So, uh, yeah, I was looking through that, um, but then that's when I was able to see uh, on Sunday, I was like, okay, what's, what kind of stuff's going on? And I saw it at, I think it was at 2.30, it was starting one from 2.30 to 6 was, oh, hey, there's an autograph session with Britt Barron, Brianna White, and Susie Yang. Why do those sound familiar? <laughs> oh, it's T- it's Tifa, Aerith, and Yuffie from yes. the, the remake trailer. Oh, Huh, that's interesting. And then I read through the description. The first out autograph is on, on us and completely free if you bring something for them to sign. I was like, sure, let's do this. Uh, and I knew that you would be very excited. Oh my god, the, I lost my fucking autographs. I lost my fucking mind, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I was at a, I was at a wave game uh, with my friends for celebrating my birthday. And then that came through, and I was just like, "Oh my god! Oh my god! Look at this!" And they're yeah, like, like, "What?" <laughs> uh, yeah, I only showed my wife, and she was like, "And?" I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> it was so fucking cool. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, which uh, one of these? You, you, for the listeners, he showed me like two different pictures. Like, which one of these Tifa like postcard photo kind of things is more appealing to you? I was like, oh, "I like this one because it's less busy." And I had no idea what the fuck he was talking about. I know you didn't know. I was like, <laughs> "Okay, cool." And then I was guys, in line. I was in line at that point. Oh my god! I was god. like, "Which one do you want?" 
Um, then you got signed and personalized. Oh my yep. God. With a little heart. Oh, I'm going to die. <laughs> yeah. Uh, very, very cool. I'm framing that shit when it gets here. I'm sure you are. Um, so yeah, I, I waited through that and, uh, there was a, like, a weird thing. I saw that in the morning. I was like, okay, I need to talk to, um, the PAPS has their enforcers or the info booth. And I was like, okay, it says that our first autograph is free, which they confirmed. Yes. I'm like, do they have things for me to sign? For them to sign, or do I need to bring my own thing? And they're like, yeah, we don't sure. know. And I'm like, <laughs> crap. Um, well, I don't have anything. I have no As way to get here. back. Uh, but I'm like, crap, how do I do this? Um, light rail to the rescue again. During lunch, I light railed to uh, International District, Chinatown. Went to Kino Kinea. Went to their, like video game import section of just stuff, art books and everything. And they had a postcard book for rebirth. So I just bought some, bought this postcard book, <laughs> had lunch and came back to the convention center in like oh, half an so, hour. So that's what you had. That's what you. Yeah. Is that what you had? That's what you photographed. Yeah. That's very that's what cool. I have them oh sign. Like that. And they even comment both, both, uh, cause I had Brianna white, um, as well. Um, Aerith, And they're like, where's this? What is this? Um, I'm like, yeah, it's a, it's a Japanese, uh, like, I guess they put out these, uh, picture books. Like it is a picture book, but the, if they are postcards, you can, um, nicely pull them out. They're not, it's not like a tear out. It, it kind of just nicely, cleanly detaches from like the spine. <laughs> um, it's, it's pretty crazy overall. And it looks great. Um, came out perfectly and you will get yours, uh, at some point there. I have a, uh, my yeah, this will be the last weekend this happens because I'm getting new uh, Wi-Fi in my house. Oh, did you drop? Uh, completely. Yeah, the Wi-Fi just completely turned off. Oh, so fun. But I am back and it is still recording. So <laughs> yeah, you didn't drop. You didn't kick you out of uh, Discord. Yeah. That's that's cool. Um, but I had basically, I said it all turned out really well. Um, that's so cool. Uh, and I will eventually get it to you. Uh, it is. It will be. Nicely flat and protected, and beautiful. With a, bunch of, a number of other things that I was supposed to give to you while you were here over the summer, and whoops, I didn't. <laughs> um, I got one. I got one very nice thing from you. So it's you did, and I was more like, than hey, enough. There was more in that box. I was just okay. It will. It will sit behind me right now. Um, very cool. Well, you have something headed toward you right now. A special thing from um, Sony, and then a little thing from me. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Very cool. Um, so other than that, I mean, that was kind of like what I did there. And then I spent a bunch of time in uh, tabletop land. Um, nice. Uh, not necessarily playing a th- bunch of stuff. I did a demo demo game for a TCG called Flesh and Blood, um, which I'd heard about for it's been out for a year, five or six years at this point. It's New Zealand TCG. Mm-hmm. Um and I've read the rules before, and I just want a demo game because I'm like, just how I need to, I need to pl- see how this actually plays. Like reading the rules, I understood the concept, but I can't really grasp what the strategy is and how you actually are supposed to like make decisions in this game. Um, and so that was fun to play uh, and learn. And other than that, it was a pretty most time was just spent walking around there. Um, Looking at different uh, shops, I bought, of course, a, a like indie RPG from some place that looked really neat, a cyberpunk thing. Um, other than that, like it was a pretty quiet day overall. And actually, my takeaway is if I do PAX again, which I probably will um, next year, I only really need like two days there tops. Yeah, that was my takeaway from Comic Con, where this time I did two days instead of four, and it was my favorite experience. It was way better. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, spending more than that, I just kind of start getting bored overall. Um, there just isn't, without like the panels driving me through, mm-hmm. and then there's just being long waits to to play things that I'm going to play anyway. Um, I don't know. There's, I'm like, I can see everything I need. If I had two days, I can at least see everything at more of a leisurely pace. Yeah, um, right. Instead of trying to cram cool. it into one day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I was happy to do it again, and I'm sure I'll be back for a bit next year. Um, I think System Era will see it. Don't not no one ever quote me on this, but I think we're planning on like having a booth there next year. Um, oh wow, again. that's cool. Like we just haven't for a while because pandemic and 
There hasn't been a huge drive, but uh, I know that a, bu- a number of people at the company are kind of itching to to pull out all the all the the booth things and and set it up again and just kind of just be there and celebrate Astroneer with like fans and things like that. So. Yeah. Well, that's cool. I'm glad Which, you I don't know time. when I'm going to put this up. Uh, we're starting to tease out. Tomorrow is a uh, Astroneer announcement. I think oh. at 9.15 in the morning, I think, uh, is what the YouTube trailer goes live. Um, it's at a... It's way, I can say that because when we're recording, it's actually public, so people can get notified when this trailer goes live. Oh, cool. But, uh, but well, it is the, the trailer for the DLC that we're making. Oh, shit, dude. I was going to say, you're in charge of posting this podcast, so you're in charge of when this goes up. Nah, I can say that. Uh, So, yeah, tomorrow will be a lot of news. um, Okay. Which is September 3rd. Very nice. Uh, Yeah, it's pretty exciting for for all of of us. Um, Is it the first DLC for the game? Yeah. I mean, we've had updates, lots of updates. Yeah, sure. This this is, this, and it's come out, it is a, it is a paid DLC. Wow. Um, Okay. um, But a lot of details will drop tomorrow. I'm looking forward to that. And we get to talk about it next week, which is very cool on the podcast. Um, I'm now remembering, and forgive me if I just have completely forgotten this, do you still have my Switch copy of Astroneer? Or did you give that back to me? That's what's in one of, one of the things in the box. Ah, perfect. Okay. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> if you gave that to me and I fucking don't remember where it went, god damn it. Yep. No, uh, no, that's one of the things in the box. Excellent. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Um. Yeah, that's cool. Well, I'm, I would love to go up to PAX again one day, so maybe we can make that happen. Yeah. Um, or Admiral City Comic Con, to be honest. That was also very, very, very that fun. That was very cool. So, yeah. Um, or you'll make it down to Comic Con one day. Who knows? Uh, that will probably happen at some point. Uh, yeah. I want to go. I want to go back to SD, SDCC at some point. Um, it's a good time. Does seem like a good time. Um, well. Uh, speaking of good time, here goes segue. Deadlock, baby. I got an invite to Deadlock thanks to my friend Daniel. I checked it out for roughly 45 minutes and said, yep, that's not for me, but I see that it's a quality product. <laughs> it's a <laughs> hero shooter MOBA with four lanes. You're trying to get into the other base, obviously, and along the way, along the lanes, there are little um, ads or little bots or whatever, um, and then yep. big fucking ads, big bots. Um, and you're working as a team trying to bust through the territory. It's very slow paced. Um, I think it was about a 45 minute match. Um, and there's one of the big, big ads. uh, It would, every time I shoot it, it would fire at me, but I was standing behind just a very tiny tree. So it's little fire thing just hit the tree. So I was just cheesing the thing and taking it down by myself. And I was like, oh, this feels good. Um, I really like the lane mechanic where you jump up and grab the rail and kind of speed ahead. I don't know if I've seen that before. Um, so I, I liked that and I liked the, the hero abilities kind of add a certain something to that genre that I haven't seen. I haven't played admittedly very much. Um, but that's about it. Other than that, I'm not really a MOBA fan. I'm not really a hero shooter person that much anymore. So yeah, that it was cool to check it out, but that's about as far as I would get. Sure. Yeah. The, the game length matches what I would expect a MOBA game yep, length to exactly. be. Um, uh, yeah, uh, had a few coworkers um, decide to check out a few weeks ago. Like we had the opportunity, if we wanted keys, we could get them. Um, I didn't. I was like, yeah, I'm I'm done with mobas overall. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I did my time in those trenches, and I'm, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I'm never going I don't back. Need, I don't need to go back. Um, uh, but like some of the like, definitely two coworkers have been like more vocal. One really enjoys it. Um, feels like it's clearly still early and needs work. Um, there's a lot of like tuning and balancing stuff that they're not too thrilled with. Uh, the other one had this who admittedly has played at least 5,000 hours of Dota two, uh, at least, and still plays Dota two all the time playing it. Uh, his thing was installed it, started playing it, um, finished a game and was like, Hmm, I don't, I don't know if I like that. Uh, Another next night, played it again. Raged quit. Rage uninstalled. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, like, watching later is like, people were talking about how much they liked it. He was like, fine, I'll try it again. And he 
got to the point where he accepted it, kind of, but doesn't feel like he's like, I can't feel like I want to spend the time to get really good at this. And he feel mm-hmm. he was very detailed in his like mechanical analysis of it, of being like, this is going to be a MOBA that's going to make people real mad, real mad, because uh, it has such an intense uh, skill ceiling to it. Like when you play against people that know what they're doing with the movement system, mm-hmm. uh, the last hitting mechanics, the um, last hitting that they don't know is a term in MOBAs of uh, one of the main ways you gain power in it is there's the creeps. Those are the NPCs that walk down the lanes. Um, uh, in MOBAs, you, you, the way you earn gold and get XP, uh, gold especially, is um, you get the last hit on an NPC. So if you kill it, you get you get the reward. Um, so you have to get very good about like estimating health right. left. And if you can kill yeah. it, um, so this game takes it to an even other level of at the beginning of the game. That's great. You last hit, you get your, I think golden experience are the same thing in deadlock. Uh, it's all combined together. It's just gold. You want gold, uh, um, souls, like the souls, Souls. The that's what yeah. it's currency. And we can call yeah, it. Yeah. Exactly. yeah, it's your currency that it's, but there's no experience. Um, right. that's right. So you're getting that. So you just kill it, you get it. Now, at some point it shifts where you kill it, you get some of it, and then a little orb floats up. And you uh-huh. have to shoot that orb. Yep. But the enemy team can shoot that orb That's and right. get it. Um, and then later in the game, it only the only thing you get is from the orb. Uh, so you need to be very good at movement uh, and um, spatial awareness. And then also be a very good shot. Yep. <laughs> um, and I'm like, God, MOBAs live and die because uh, a game of, of an MOBA is so heavily team-based. If there's yep. a weak link on your team, mm-hmm. oh boy. <laughs> um, just the vitriol coming toward them? Oh, the vitriol coming. It's just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just like... And he, his whole... My coworker's whole thing is like, this is, game just requires incredible skill. And the, the, the player base right now is going to probably stratify real hard and Mm -hmm. you're gonna have the people that are just very casual generally but to like break in as you start like ranking up and i'm sure they'll have rank stuff you're gonna have to be very good yeah because there's also a lot of movement tech in the game of like double jumping uh but very very specific timing of double jumps and and dash jumps and sliding and like being at certain speeds so you can do other things like he was going through the tech and i'm like Nope, I'm out. Like, this is yep. a lot. Um, it is. It it, is. There's going to be, it's going to be for someone and for some audience. It's probably a big audience, but I'm like, not, not me. Um, But it did cause him to rage quit. So, you know, um, I just wish from Valve, we weren't seeing, or even just from others. I think Concord in the same way here, like the focus on these online hero shooters, like they could have been, you know, I, I just want to see a single player game, you know? I just don't yeah. know. There's I mean, this game here. is probably, as far as I know, is being done by um, this username Ice Frog, who is the person that made Dota. Oh, back interesting. In the day. Like, because he okay. works at Valve. Like, yeah. he, that's why he got hired at Valve and did, did Dota 2 at Valve. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This is totally, he's definitely involved here. This just feels like I'm like, a portion of Valve's Dota 2 team wanted to make a different type of MOBA. Yeah. Um, and because of how Valve works, they can. Yep. So, um, which is cool. People are getting this and it sounded like there's a lot of people playing this game. Um, yes. Uh, I mean, it's easy to get invites now overall. Like, um, yeah, if, if I got in, one, anyone can get one. Uh, yeah, because it's basically if you're in, you get invites for other people now. It's like yeah. the old, like how you got Gmail back in the day. Yeah. Totally. Um, trying to see if deadlocks, um, player, I know it had 50,000 people at one point um, for a game that is a... Oh, no, it's right now. It it peaked today at 171,000 players. Damn. That's for a game good. that's at, has just barely been announced, has like the most placeholder of placeholder pages on Steam now. Um, yep. So... Uh, I mean, they even say early develop. It's an early development build. Uh, lots of temporary art and experimental gameplay. So, I mean, I guess that's kind of what they're working at, trying to see where the the pain points are of playing and um, how the community evolves. But man, I'm not interested in playing 
dealing with the toxicity and playing in the toxicity of a MOBA ever again. Yeah, sure. Yeah. That was being uh, sometimes if you're playing poorly, uh, the target of it, and then when you're not playing poorly, even if you're not like fuming and ranting at a person through the chat and berating them there, but being just frustrated because you're losing because a person is sucking. Um, yeah. And it's like, why am I doing this to myself? Um, I rarely come away feeling good at the end of this. Um, right. You don't want to be playing games that make you feel that way. And I feel like MOBA <laughs> yeah. is like the number one fucking genre for that. It, it, yeah, and it's just mechanically built into the genre right now because you have to rely on team to do it well. Um, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, deadlock, it's a thing. Uh, I'm pretty sure if you can get a code, you can, you can get it from somewhere and, and play it. Um, yeah. And eventually it'll be the next thing from valve. Um, yep. But, uh, it, it's worth checking out if you can get a key, but not, a, it's not for everyone. I found some cool things to like in the mechanics and like that orb thing. I really liked that where it added that level of skill, but it also told me, oh yeah, this isn't for me. <laughs> this is not, this is not my genre. So I turned it off and played Witcher 2. The last there you night, go. Uh, which is more more my shit. All right. Uh, before we move into what we've been playing, where Anthony and I talk a shit ton about Diablo 4, because I am severely on my shit for that game, we are going to play the inaugural edition of Video Game Spelling Bee. Anthony, oh, this no. is for you. This is a game that only nerds can love. I have five questions for you that you can get a total of six points on, uh, and we're going to see how well you can spell. How, how do you feel about your spelling skills? Uh, when I'm asked how to spell properly, very badly. Okay, perfect. This is going to be awesome then. <laughs> I, should, I should just bring up a notepad right now so that I can type. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, type it. I'm doing this. Yep. All right. Number one, Fable was teased in 2001 by developer Lionhead Studios. Lead designer and oh, Lionhead Jesus. co-founder Peter Molyneux promised an experience like no other and that the game would revolutionize the RPG. Anthony, please spell Molyneux. Uh... Uh, how does that work? M O L Y N E A U X. Oh, you're so close! I'm no sure a. I'm close. It doesn't look no right. No A, no A. Okay, it was just that I the A was a, a an ad later because I'm like the E U X didn't look right to me. But, yeah, no, okay. man, that was real close. I'll give you half a point <laughs> for that one. That was very nice. Uh, number two, Asterian and Cunin is a fictional character from Larian Studios' Baldur's Gate video game series, which is based on Dungeons & Dragons and Forgotten Realms. Making his first appearance in 2003, 23's Baldur's Gate 3, Asterian is available as a major playable character. Please spell Asterian. A-S-T-A-R-I-O-N. Perfect. Another point, that one point there. Bonus, spell and Cunin. I had no idea he had a last name. I'm sure he has a. I'll say it again. An Kunin. An Kunin. Mm-hmm. A N B U N I E N. Oh, so close. Added one extra E there. Okay. A N C U N I N. An Kunin. Uh, question. <sighs> okay. Sorry. Question number three. Three Houses is set on the continent of Fodlan, divided between three ruling powers currently at peace. These nations are connected through the Garag Mach Monastery, which houses a church and an officer's school for students from each nation. Please spell the continent of Fodlan. Uh, probably wrong. F-O-D-L-A-N-D. So close. An extra letter. F-O-D-L-A-N. Fodlan. Fodlin, not Fodlin. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Fodlin. Very close. Fodlin. Very close. All right. The story of one extra letter <laughs> per. Yep, per pretty much. <laughs> uh, two more questions. Number four. First announced in 2013, Persona 5 was delayed from its original date in 2014 due to being unfinished. Its themes revolve around attaining freedom from the limitations of modern society. The story was strongly inspired by picaresque fiction which is fiction about a lovable scoundrel. And the party's personas were based on literary outlaws and rebels. Please spell picaresque. Uh, let me type this one out. Uh, P-I-C-A-R-E-S-Q-U-E. 
Perfect. You got it. Nice work. Picaresque. Um, that fits for Son of Five. Lovable scoundrels. Yeah. Yep. Uh, last but not least, question number five. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is a 2015 action role-playing game developed by CD Projekt Red. It's a sequel to the 2011 Witcher 2 Assassin of Kings and the third game in the Witcher video game series. The games follow the Witcher series of fantasy novels written by Andre Sapkowski, or Sapkowski, excuse me, Andre Sapkowski. Please spell the full name Andre Sapkowski. Yeah, no. Uh, Andre, <laughs> A-N-D-R-D-R-E. Okay. Is that right? And Sapkowski, I'm not going to get Sapkowski. I'm not going to Sapkowski. This one's way more likely for you to get than Andre. Sapkowski. Sapkowski. Mm-hmm. Uh, sap. Sap. Oh, wait. Sap. Okay, let Sapkowski. me. Th- Sapkowski. Sap. S A P, um, K O W S K I. You got really it. That That's easy. Sapkowski. Okay. It is that easy. Andre, however, is not. Are you ready? Uh, it's, um, oh yeah. Okay. A N D R Z E J. Yeah. So Z just chimed <laughs> in there. Sure. Why not? Thanks, yeah. Poland. Thanks, Polish. Oh. <laughs> so you got those, wow. sil- those silent Z's. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, one and a half, two and a half, uh, and another half. You got three points. Congratulations. Okay. On our okay. First edition of Video Game Spelling Bee. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you for bearing with me on that one. I had too much time on my hands today and too much fun. <laughs> All right. Next, we're moving into what we've been playing, which is, for me, a lot of Diablo 4, but let's hear from you. Uh, a lot of Diablo 4. <laughs> um, holy crap. Um, I just... This past week, I just really pushed into like really far in game. Like, how far can I keep pushing myself? Uh, hundred level, hundred barb. I got the weapon that I really wanted to drop, so I can make my bash cleave build. Um, and then I've just been back cleaving my way through the game. Uh, in game, trying to get better itemization, um, and just kind of I've never pushed the end game of Diablo four like this before. I'm just oh, trying wow. to see what's see what's there. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I will say a little light overall. There's bosses to fight and everything, but if I compare it to other action RPGs, a little light, which I think I've, I mean, not think, I have heard that criticism of it before compared to other yep. ARPGs. That was like the main criticism, I thought. Yeah, and it's gotten better. Uh, clearly, there's there are things to do and there are things, goals to work towards. Um, and like pushing out your 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 item power and um especially through tempering and like master working your items so if you get a good item you're like i'm gonna invest in this item um and start making it better um with a bit of randomness to it so because it's an action rpg and that's that's part of it um uh but like what you can do as you push kind of starts uh um, winding down. Um, I still, I have some like uber bosses to do, but I mean, I've this time now I've done, I fought on I fought Duriel, um, who are in game bosses, but you can fight them in like what they call tormented versions of them where they're a hundred levels higher than they were. So they were normally a level hundred level 100. You have to fight them as level 200 and your max level is a hundred. So yeah. you have to optimize your, like all your in game, mechanics to to get their items uh fully masterworked and everything um does their art look different or they look the same but just the double level uh i don't know actually i haven't mm. tried summoning a one one of the 200 level 200 ones mm. i just know i'm like yep uh but all the like tormented ones they drop uh the highest level of gear there's like a set of like six or seven mythic uniques in the game they're purple framed and they're like the ultimate items, and you only can get them from um, the tormented bosses. Oh, uh, we're back to bail runs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, that is like you do boss runs in this, and they're definitely focusing. That's cool. On that. Okay, uh, but it's there. Um, but I feel like the time since Diablo two to Diablo four, they've there has been more in game has been shown in action RPGs and how you can make it more engaging than just the boss run over and over. Um, yeah, yeah. 
So they're getting there. Um, they've previewed stuff for um, the Vessel of Hatred that they are going to be really focusing on in game a lot more in that and and changing a lot of it and trying to like just add more depth to the end game. Um, but I've pushed real far. I can do. I'm basically can fight. There's this thing called the pit where you, it's basically greater rifts from Diablo three. Mm, um, yeah. You're just pushing higher and higher and I can do greater rifts like one 65, 66 without much issue, which is monster level 165 ish or so right in there. Um, I'm not up to 200 yet to, to fight the tormented bosses. Um, doing the seasonal mechanic a lot because it just gives you great resources. Um, and I think well, if, like, if I'm going to continue to play, I don't know if I'll continue. I'm like, I'm kind of hitting the cap and I'm like, I think I want to take a bit of a break before Vessel of Hatred because I'm probably going to go real hard on the game again yep. um, yeah. in October. So maybe uh, being like, cool, I pushed pretty hard here. This is pretty neat. I've finished pretty much... Um, finished the season... Um, I guess I can, I need to get one more achievement on the season and I would get all the, I would have like the, the special title and everything that you get for the season. So where you've done everything. That's yeah. Cool. Basically I've gotten everything I possibly, what all the rewards I could theoretically get. Um, and I might still push for that. I just need to get, I need to consistently survive Infernal Hordes, which is the current league mechanic, tier 6. And I can do tier 5, no issues. Tier 6, uh, if the enemies spawn wrong, or I get stunned, I'm just insta-dead. Insta um, oh, damn. It, I'll, just, I'll just pop um, from like 68,000 health, just insta-die. Um, how, how close are you to the platinum on this game? Um, close. I think I have like two achievements that I have to do. Okay. Um, like a hardcore kill... at 50? Or you already, you already uh, did that. I did that. I did that one. Um, it is, I know one of them is I have to do Echo of Lilith. Mm. Um, and that fight's just obnoxious. Not me. I have, I'm perfectly geared to do it. It just has, uh, instant kills. Oh, like, that's annoying. It's not, it's not if, it's not just, do you have the stats to survive this? You actually have to be mechanically and reactively good enough to mm -hmm. avoid certain attacks because you'll just right. die. Um, I've got about halfway through it, and then I usually, like, uh, screw up, and I'm just like, uh, okay. Um, I want to get through that one because that I need to get that achievement, and I think there was... Maybe that's the only achievement. It's that one, then it pops the platinum for me. Nice. I'm, like, so close. So I figure um, that many hours, you've got to be close, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did the hardcore thing. Getting a hardcore character to 50 wasn't hard. Um, yeah. Um, but man, uh, they have turned this game around so much since it launched. Um, and it's still, I have said it plenty of times on this podcast and I will still say it. It is the best feeling action RPG on the market. Yeah. Like it just feels good moment to moment to play. And it also feels great on a controller. <laughs> um, it's it's amazing on a controller, man. It's I mean, yeah. I know, it, three was too. Like they figured it out. Mm -hmm. um, they did. But man, your your recommendation, which I think was just last week, yeah. of hey, it's good on Steam Deck. It's on sale, so payday hit. And I was like, all right, time to do it. And boy, you were right. Like playing that on Steam Deck, like reignited my interest in that game so much. I put double the time into it. Um, yeah. That I, you know. In the past week, I doubled my time over the past, you know, six months that I've had the game. Um, and I'm looking forward to playing it after tonight. Um, I'm playing as a rogue. And I was just, I was stuck in um, the Fractured Peaks or whatever they're called. Um, but then I just decided to start progressing the critical path and kept pushing the map. And, you know, the story, I think the story is, like, way fucking better than Diablo 3. I don't know if it's, like, amazing, but yeah. it's way better than 3. And 3 sucked. So I'm happy to have an interesting story with really interesting side quests. Um, I'm on world tier two. That's the tier that I'm playing at. Um, mm -hmm. I'm level 38, 39, something like that playing a rogue. Um, and just, yeah, the moment to moment gameplay is great. The skill tree is a little unwieldy for me. It's, there's, it's just too big for the box. And I'm not sure like, you know, there's just too much to put my points into. So I just found a guide online that said, here's a good rogue build. Do these things like, okay, great. I'm just going to follow that. Um, and I'm having just mowing through enemies and 
um, having a really, really good time. And the, the, the loot chase is finally feels good. I, I think they revamped it with this 2.0, I think. Um, uh, cause it didn't feel good uh, before I thought. Yeah, it was patch one, 1.4. It was whatever last season was. That's when yeah, they, exactly. they did loot reborn. Um, yep. Yep. Uh, and you're not there yet, but they really, really adjusted the unique items in this current season. Cause so. I've got, um, I have, I was going to ask you because I've, you know, I've had a bunch of legendary items equipped, but then I have yeah. one unique item. I'm like, is unique higher than legendary? It looks like it is. Um, kind of, um, because like you can't adjacent. adjacent, I would say. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. They usually have pretty grand effects, though. Like, mm-hmm. will straight up turn on a build. Like, the build that I'm playing on my Barbarian, I can't play that build until I have a certain unique sword. Ah, because that unique sword changes how my basic skills work. Like, that, it just does. And... Uh, this feels like a big return to Diablo 2 in some ways. Yes, um, that's what I'm feeling. Because Diablo 2, there was, um, there was like, I always remember there's the Whirlwind Assassin um, build, which you could only, Whirlwind is a barbarian skill. Yep. Assassins don't get that. But there was a claw, a late game unique claw that you could get for an assassin that would give you two points of Whirlwind. <laughs> um, Very cool. And that's, if you get that claw, you can do this build basically. Um, well, and I they're kind of going back to that, and they said they're not doing set items. They're not going to go down. Um, they're not going to do sets? Nope. Um, oh, because they, didn't, they didn't like how it turned out. Two sets were almost never used whenever uh, you started pushing in game. They just weren't mm-hmm. good enough. Yeah. And then three was a game where you always built to a set. Yep, that's right. Like, that's what turned your build on, was getting the set for your build. Yep. Um, and they're like, we don't want that. So... They're not saying I th- there have been quotes over the years saying like they're not against set items. They just have to figure out how to do them that fits with the itemization that they want. Um, yeah. There's a I, I think it's my unique or maybe it's a legendary, but I was looking through my skill tree yesterday and I had twisted blades up to five, five out of five. And then all of a sudden it was seven out of five. I was like, what yep. the fuck? And I, yep. I think one of my items turned it yep. up to. Yeah, uh, I have a I have a skill that I think I have my bash up to 12 out of five. Holy shit. That's because great. I mean that's just how you, yeah you just you just get equipment you're like no I want it to give me more more yep. bash that's my that's my primary skill like yeah. more um, but Dude, that's, that's the thing with it is I think the itemization they figured out so it's not uh, there's enough depth there to keep me hooked with it but it's not nearly as complicated as something like Path of Exile or um, mm-hmm. yeah. Last Epoch um, which. I have to spend a ton of time looking at all their items and like what stats they're giving me. Like, yeah, Diablo has always been kind of the easiest out of all of them, but I'm okay mm. with that. Um, it's it's also fun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't have to. Yeah. I don't have to have a PhD to understand what's going on. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's cool. I'm glad you're enjoying it. You did you not beat the story before? No, for some reason no. I thought you had you had finished the story one time through. Nope. So I want to. I want to get through the story because um, okay. it's interesting. But also, I think there's what four acts? Are there five? There's yeah, four. there's four. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm, it. I thought the expansion would add a fifth, but I'm thinking of maybe Diablo two or no. Three. Yeah, it's different. Um, how many acts? Uh, six acts in the base game. Six. There are six. Because the, yeah, because acts are just they're a little bit different than mm-hmm. the typical structure of like um Diablo two or three. Um mm-hmm. I think there's like definitely a later act that is pretty short overall. Um okay. like yeah, it's wanna... just storytelling. They yeah. really broke the acts down by storytelling, not zone specifically all the time. So well and it's it's interesting storytelling. I'm I'm enjoying it. But I have not beaten the story yet I want to so that I can just like, you know, jump to a new character and grind Be- and get into the next season or whatever. Yeah. And wait I mean you'll get there probably about the time the expansion comes and you can That's see what happens goal. next. Yep. I'm very curious. Um yep. because the current season had uh it actually I was playing it like once I got to world tier three on this character. I had skipped the story again, but it introduced a quest line that you could do that clearly is building towards the expansion. Um uh, That's I mean, very cool. The the Infernal Hordes, I'm fighting the oh god, the Travanical. Mm. They're the the 
the they were the priests in Karast that yeah. had like the you you fight them. That's the infernal hordes. Like you're fighting them um, in hell. That's really um, cool. And it's narratively contextualized in. Um, so I don't know. I mean, all this stuff is going to be a building back to Mephisto. Um, mm, this is like, else, oh be. man, scratching so much nostalgia for I know, me. This is I know. great. Um, yeah. Uh, so, again. so thanks for the tip to pick it up on Steam Deck. Yeah, and Steam Deck, it, is, it runs great. It does. I, it's a smooth 45 frames a second. That's what I've got set at. Yep. Yep. It's really, really good. Really good. Um, other than that, my daughter and I jumped back into Sea of Stars and oh, nice. enjoying that. This It's mechanically interesting. It is not an easy game. And, you yeah. know, when my daughter wants to take over and do the, the battling, um, like you really you can't fuck it up. Like you if you miss the locks or you hit the wrong enemy in the wrong order, like you're just overwhelmed and fucking totally screwed. Um, so it's, it's a little unforgiving in that way. And I even have like a couple of the cheats turned on to like, give me a hundred percent health, uh, and then health regen after each battle. And it's still like pretty tough, um, in a way that's not like, um, I don't know, like, like, a dark souls, demon souls, Elden ring kind of tough. It's more like just an annoying tough. Um, so I'm not sure what's up with the balance of the, the enemies and, and the way that you've got to go about the battle structure. It's, it's interesting, but there's something off there for me. But besides that, it's beautiful. It really does the Chrono Trigger kind of thing um, pretty well. And, yeah, she's into it, and we're we're pushing ahead a little bit and, and loving the puzzle solving specifically. And that's, that's really all. cool. Um, yeah. Yeah, all right. I have heard that it is a bit unforgiving. That doesn't It me. is. It's, like it's, is. it's mind-boggling to me. Like, with the cheats off, like, I'm just getting wrecked. And I was like, what the fuck? Um, yeah, I, maybe I just need to get good, but it just, it feels for that kind of game, it feels a little bit off. Um, but oh well. All right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, cool. Well, this was episode 445, Prof and Dead Play Games. If you like us, please rate us on your podcast service of choice. We'll be back next week to talk about the DLC news for Astronaut and a few other things, yeah. I'm sure. All right, Definitely. folks, until then, see you later. Later, everyone.